Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, make a super easy way show you a super easy way to render an ambient occlusion for your model. This is what I call the lazy man's way of doing it. Uh, so basically what you have to do is create a render layer. So let's go ahead and do that. So under the channel box here, click under the render tab, that's going to show you render layers. Um, so let's go ahead and select the objects. So what you want to do is select all your objects in your scene except for the lights. Okay, so select that and what you're going to do is click on this button here that creates a new layer with the assigned object. So now we'll click on that. Let's go ahead and name it. I'm going to name it Ambient Occlusion. And make sure you name it because if you don't name it it's going to be more difficult for you to know uh, where that is. So as you can see right now, this indicates indicates that this is going to be rendering and not the master layer. So when you click on the master layer, you're going to be rendering the master layer. If you click on the ambient occlusion, once you render, that's what's going to render. So in order to enable the ambient occlusion, you have to go under the attribute editor. And here, this is why it's a good thing to name it. You're going to find that your render layer for ambient occlusion is right here. Uh, and it has the name that you gave it to. So to enable the ambient occlusion, uh, you can see that you have a preset here. So just left mouse click. And as you can see, Maya already has a preset for occlusion. So that's what we're going to do. Click on occlusion and immediately your model becomes dark or completely black. That's, uh, don't get scared by that, that's how it's supposed to look. So now, if we tried to render it, we wouldn't see much of ambient occlusion, so we, there's a few settings we have to mess with. So under out color, we have to click on the arrow. So this is the important uh, place that we have to be in. Basically, what I change, usually I always leave also the settings the way they are, but uh, of course you can switch some of those so you can have a better looking ambient occlusion. But, um, most important setting that I mess with is the max distance. So I'm going to set that to something like 50, and I wouldn't go uh, above like 100. That would be like the max. So basically, this determines the distance of the ambient occlusion. So I believe the higher you have it, the you're gonna have darker areas for the ambient occlusion, and if you have it lower, it's gonna be a lot lighter. So that's how it works. Or that's the uh, easiest way to explain it. So now I'm going to click uh, right here so I can see what I'm rendering. Get to one of my views here. Okay. So now we are ready to render. Again, it's kind of hard to see once you have a occlusion, but if you want to see uh, what you're looking at, you can enable the wireframe so you can actually see where your object is in space. Okay. So now we can just go ahead and render the ambient occlusion. Since you have that render layer selected, as you can see here, it's rendering that layer. So you can just render it. And here it is. We have the ambient occlusion for our model. And I don't have a plane under this, but if I did, I would see like a somewhat of a shadow occlusion there. Uh, so basically, you can use this. And again, you can increase the max distance for the object or reduce that if you think they're getting way too dark here. But this is basically the easiest way of doing an ambient occlusion. And now you can use this to um, in Photoshop or your compositing program use this over your original render.